I can't believe we're standing here from a Facebook message a year and a half ago. It feels so much longer, like I've known you and loved you my whole life. I remember our first date so well and how I didn't actually want to go on a date with you and how it ended up lasting three hours because we couldn't stop talking. I knew the moment I met you that I would love you for the rest of my life. That's how it is when you meet your soulmate. People think it's crazy that we got engaged after six months, but I think it's perfect. When you know, you know. Why wait? I mean, we're getting married during a pandemic. Clearly, love doesn't wait for the right time. Eric, you are my rock, my calm when I'm anxious, my sanity in the chaos. You are super romantic, hysterical, handsome, and most of all, my best friend. I promise to never make fun of you because you're such a picky eater. I promise to put up with your sports obsession and be the cutest dress sports fan who knows absolutely nothing about what we're watching. I promise to let you make our children Buckeyes fans before Antonio and Raymond turn them into Irish ones. I promise to always sing with you. I promise to kiss you goodnight every night. I promise to be loyal to you and comfort you in times of need. I promise to not always get mad at you when you do something completely dangerous and terrifying like cliff jumping or hanging on beams at an unfinished house. I promise to get better at multitasking like when I'm on my phone and you're talking to me. I promise to love you for the rest of my life, to help carry the load when the world gets too heavy, and to be the best wife and mother I can. I promise to be with you for all the championships, as well as the losses, both in life and in sports. And we're Cleveland fans, so clearly the losses are going to outweigh the victories. Eric, thank you for being the first one to say I love you after only a week. I love your heart and how you wear it on your sleeve. I would go through all the pain and tears all over again if it leads me to you at the end. I found a path to God through you and have become such a better woman just by being loved by you. Marrying you even during these crazy times is the biggest honor of my life. Thank you for asking me. I love you and can't wait to build our forever together. Every time we talked about our vows, you asked me if I would be nervous talking in front of everyone. My answer was always no. What made me most nervous was not being able to put into words how much I love you. I realized that no matter how much or how I say it, I will never even begin to scratch the surface of how blessed that you are a part of my life. Who would have thought it would take my sister and your mom for us to find our soulmates in each other? As I was reflecting on our last year and a half together, I am flooded with emotion, but the two feelings that come to mind most are happiness and love. You truly have made me the happiest man on earth, and I promise I will strive every day to do the same for you. The second is love. You have shown me what true love is in the purest form. I promise I will work on making you feel all the love I have for you every day. Even though you admitted to loving me first, I can guarantee I will love you to my last breath. You have been my rock and my support, your deaths, bad day, and even Cleveland sports losses, and I am forever grateful. As your husband, I want to be your foundation no matter what life throws our way, even when Lucy decides to pee in the bed at 3 a.m. You've introduced Lucy, who truly makes up our little family, and she has become my little buddy who brings me so much joy. I know you'd look forward to the reading of 1 Corinthians 13, and because it has everything we strive for in our relationship, I promise to work to honor this verse and vow to work every day in our relationship. I'm so lucky to have you in my life. You're caring, fun, understanding, driven, smart, beautiful, and family-driven. I am excited to start this journey with you by my side. I know God has big plans for our future family. You truly are my gift from God, my miracle. Today, I don't just get to marry the most beautiful woman in the world. I get to marry my best friend. Sarah, thank you for all the wonderful memories we have already made, and I cannot wait to experience and make new memories together throughout our lives. You are my rock, my inspiration, and my everything. I love you, Sarah Angeline, and can't wait to see what God has planned for us in our future.
I was thinking to myself that if I was with somebody who, was, who didn't know you when they were painting a picture of you, how would I characterize you? What, what, what features would have to be in, in that picture? And I was thinking to myself, one thing that I know that they would have to get right is the smile. Because when I think about Eric, I always think about a smile being on his face. I want to challenge you to be that kind of a blessing in Sarah's life. And one of the ways that you can do that is by always smiling when you're looking at her or when you're looking in her direction. Always look at Sarah with joy in your heart. She is beautiful, she is smart, she is capable, she is hardworking, and she has great values. So you keep smiling in her direction. Keep seeing the best in Sarah, and let her qualities always be a reminder to you of how God has blessed you through her. You come from a tight-knit family that lives in a tight-knit family-oriented community. It teaches us that there is always room at the table for somebody else. Family teaches us, therefore, that there is always more room in our hearts to love. Dr. and Mrs. Eric Johnson. <laughs> heartbeat is the rhythm of this relationship and as you and Eric create a home uh, and a life together make it your goal every single day to live out what the best of family is all about and be the kind of couple who always creates room at your table for others for family and my prayer for you is that at the center of your heart will be found the beating heart of God's family. And so I would just continue to encourage you to pursue what it means to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Keep learning what it means to be a part of his family and apply that to your life and to this family that you are creating with, with Eric. And as you do so, then you will reflect God's family and what could possibly be better than that. And my mom told her, like, don't have Eric reach out until the end of the semester. Just wait, you know, until the end of, you know, finals. Of course, me and Sarah are at a party, and she gets a DM in her Facebook message. And we both look, and it's Eric. A little, a month too soon. <laughs> we were, like, Googling your name until we came across, like, a five-page article of Eric he was studying abroad and basically saved a girl's life at the Great Wall of China. <laughs> at this time, I'm like, who's Eric Johnson? And then I read this, and it's hard to be a critic then. You know, I'm sold. <laughs> Eric told me very confidently, no hesitation, that he'll marry my sister. She just 100% found her equal match, that hopeless romantic who falls quick, um, falls hard, and doesn't look back and someone she can watch Disney movies all the night with, because I know they do that. <laughs> and honestly, most importantly, just laugh and to be herself with. Thank you, Eric, for being that perfect person for Sarah. I'm happy for you both, and um, blessed to share this amazing day with you.
love for one another when you lose tolerance. And I, and I, and I think that that First Corinthians speaks a lot about, um, in general, tolerance towards one another and tolerance towards the conditions. We welcome you to our family in the same sense that we are welcome to a wonderful family. And, and so I think it's mutual here. So I toast this beautiful bride and groom and welcome you to your family. And thank you for welcoming us to your family. Cheers. better to give a speech and give Eric advice than this marriage veteran here. <laughs> it's been about a whole four weeks and uh, we're still going pretty strong, so I think, I think I'm the guy. You know, it, it's hard to think about writing a speech for the guy who's been your best friend since the day that you were born. But not have we always just been best friends, but I was lucky enough to be best friends with a guy who I looked, looked up to as my hero. Uh, Eric's smart caring, hardworking, and is way softer than me. <laughs> then it comes to Sarah. I will never forget the first day he texted me Eric multiple times after hours to make sure that his new blind date did not murder him <laughs> on their first night after four hours of no communication. <laughs> but shortly after I learned, and not only did the date go well, but that Sarah would be around for a long time. So here's a toast to Eric and Sarah, the great marriage and new sibling for Chris, Hillary, and I. To Eric and Sarah. Woo!